Good morning, family of God. It's so wonderful to be with you today. Um, I've got our special guest here in the studio today for the very first time. I've got Nathan with me, who is, um, he's actually called our lion boy. He's the one that, I'm going to go through the story of Simba today, so I brought him on, I thought it'd be appropriate, but he used to roar like a lion. He said, Dad, please can I watch um, the Lion King again? And uh, I believe that he has a lion in him. So you go over there, my boy, and I've got Ethan and Emma, our three kiddies in the studio today, and we're so grateful to God for them and my beautiful wife. Welcome to Clinton Palfreman Ministries. So praise God, it's wonderful to be with you. We're going to be going through a series. It, it is part of the Limitless series. Um, and we've, we've been talking about your identity and how you see yourselves. And today's message, as part of that, is, is the sons of God are here. The sons and the daughters of God are here. And really it's to show you that you have a king inside of you. And we're going to go through the Lion King. And I'm going to show you a couple of, um, a couple of nuggets in that story that you'll be able to link up to the Word of God and see who you are. Uh, in Christ Jesus. And so I just shared with you what God has been sharing with me. Um, he said to me, it's time to unlock the doors of heaven. And he said to me, the rich treasuries of the heaven upon the earth. And he said this, the earth, and this is what I want you to see, the earth is waiting for the manifestations, the signs and the wonders of the sons and the daughters of God. The signs and the wonders of the sons and the daughters of God. And we know that Isaiah 8.18 uh, 8, 18 says that you were created for signs and for wonders. And the way that you see signs and wonders, and one of the greatest things you can ever have, is an understanding and a revelation of your identity. And that's really what I want to take you through um, today. Romans 8 verse 19 and 22. So the series is called The Sons of God Are Here. The sons of God are here. They're here, but they're not really doing what they're supposed to be doing. And a good picture of that is Gideon. So Gideon was hiding in caves and dens, but really inside of Gideon was a king. And it took the word of God upon Gideon to bring out the king in him. And so that's what I want to show you in, 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 in what we go through today. And so my assignment really is to show you who you are. Um, so let's, let's dive straight into it. It says, for the earnest expectation of the cre Creator waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, the world is waiting for the signs and the wonders that are coming forth from the sons of God. But very often, what's happening is the sons of God are taking the back seat and not really taking their place that they should be. For we know that the whole creation is groaning and travailing in pain, even up until now. And we know the enemy has uh, had the system, um, his, his system held down, he's tormenting the system, he's afflicting the system. And um, what's happening is he's, he's causing chaos everywhere. We know that this, there was a virus that he released into the earth. But it's really a time for the church to now come up and start to deal with these issues. And so the whole world is awaiting your manifestation, the power of God to bring deliverance to mankind. And so, as I said, in the picture of Gideon, what happened was Gideon was saying uh, they were hiding in caves and dens and he was found in a, in a wine press hiding. And an angel of God comes to Gideon and he says to him, the Lord says, thou mighty man of valor. And the moment he speaks that into Gideon, the next moment, the next chapter after, we see Gideon chasing after and killing 120,000 men. And God said to him, you are going to save Israel as one man. And Gideon said, who me? That I'm the least of my, my, uh, my family and my father's house. I really am uh, the smallest of the bunch. And yet you saying that I'm going to save Israel? Well, yes, that's what God is saying. And so let's dive straight into the story of, of Simba and the Lion King. So I was sitting on, on, our, um, on our porch this morning and I actually went out and, and walked through the through kind of the fields, I guess you want to call it. It's, we're in an estate, in a golf estate. And uh, I saw the sun rising. And as the sun rises up, it catches glimpses on the house and on the course, the golf course, and it lights up all different parts of the estate. And um, if you remember, God said to you, as far as your eyes can see, I'm going to give it to you. 
And so we start the movie. The movie, The Lion King, starts with Simba and his dad sitting on the edge of a cliff of a mountain top. And so what happens is his dad says to him, my boy, everything the light touches is yours. And I believe that my father is saying that to you this morning. Whatever your eyes can see, as far as your eyes can see, he's given it to you. And the Bible says over in, um, in Proverbs 13, 22, that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And your father's left you a beautiful inheritance. In fact, if you want to look it up, it says in Deuteronomy 8, verse 7 to 9, that he's left you brooks and beautiful streams. Let me just read that to you. He's left it for you. But what's happened is the enemy has come in and taken your stuff. And I'm going to show you how to get your stuff back. And so if you look here in 7, it says in 8, let's just go uh, Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 9. It says, For the Lord is bringing you into a good land. He's bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and water, fountains and depths of springs of valleys and hills, a land full of wheat and barley and wine and trees and pomegranates and oil and olive oil and honey, where you can eat bread without scarceness, and you shall not lack anything in that land. And so God has provided the beautiful land for you. But what's happened is the enemy has come in and he's taken that land. So here's Simba and his dad. We know that um, he shows him this entire land and he says, my boy, this is all yours. He said, everything the light touches is our kingdom. All of this, Simba says, he says, yes, my boy, all of this is yours. And he says to him, it's yours to protect. Now, you can see Adam in the story where Adam was uh, to dress and to keep the vineyards. And we know that Adam, Adam fell from grace and the enemy deceived Adam. And so this is what happens in the story of Simba. And I believe it's happened a lot with the children of God. And I'm going to show that to you throughout the story. And he says, my boy, you have a, we have a great responsibility because everything the light touches is yours, but you have to protect it. And we know that in scene two, the enemy comes and Scar comes. Scar is um, Mufasa's, uh, the father's brother. And he comes and he deceives this, the father and the son. And so what happens is he sets up, uh, he sets up a plot and a plan and he sends through these wildebeers through the valleys. And they start a stampede. And Simba is in the valley. He's led him to the place. And what happens is the enemy wants to take you and separate you to a place where he can destroy you. And so what you've got to do is you've got to be very careful about what you do in this season. And so what he does is he's in this gauntlet. You call it a gauntlet. And here's Simba. And he starts. So the enemy starts these wildebeers to run. And here they come. And thousands upon thousands enter this gauntlet. He has this little baby lion in the middle of the gauntlet. He jumps onto a tree. Um, the, the bird goes and calls the father. The father comes. The father throws the son uh, into a safe place, but ends up that the father goes up to climb a line, and the enemy deceives the father and throws him off a cliff, and he dies. And so in scene three, we see here is this little lion, and this is where he is tricked out of his inheritance, and I want you to see this. So Scar comes to the little lion. The father is now dead. He's lying there and he comes to this little boy and he says, listen, my boy, what are you going to, what is your mother going to say? What have you done, Simba? What have you done? And so very often the enemy wants to come and deceive you. He puts guilt and condemnation and shame on you. And so what happens is you've got to protect yourself and understand who's speaking. And so what happens is he tricks Simba out of the promised land. And this is what the enemy has done. He has tricked us out of our promised land. In the movie, it was called the Pride Land. The Pride Land is like a Canaan land. It's the brooks that flow with milk and honey. And so what happens is Simba then runs out of the Pride, runs away from his family because the enemy has told him he's not good enough. He can't do this. What have you done? You'll never, they'll never accept you, so and so and forth. And he runs out and you find him in a desert land. And I'll give you that scripture. It's found in Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. It says this, in a desert land, he was, they found him in a barren and howling wasteland. And he shielded him. These are these two friends that come up, shielded him. And they cared for him and they guarded him as the apple of his eye. So he runs off into this desert land. He gets thirsty. He falls down. He dies. But here comes Pumbaa. Uh, who is a warthog, and Timon, who's a, who uh, is a um, meerkat. And so they find this little lion, and they find him lying there, and they take him into this kind of pasture, 
And we find out that they now befriend him and uh, they work with this, with this little lion and they get him fed up again. But the thing is they're feeding him on grubs and on, um, on worms. And so you find this lion that is the lion of the tribe of Judah eating bugs and worms and little spiders and whatever else. Now that is not a meal for a lion. And so what happens is they end up singing the song, Akuna Matata, no worries for the rest of your life. So here's this lion eating bugs and worms, but should really be eating zebra. So he says to them, hey Pumba, Timon, don't you have any zebra here? Don't you have any buffalo? Because how does this lion survive? And so this is a picture of the church. And so the picture of the church is this. We're sitting down, we're relaxing, and as long as we have a few grubs, a few worms, and a few little bits and bobs to eat, we're happy. The enemy has deceived you out of your promised land and your pride land, and that's what I want to see. And so it's time for the king in you to come out. And so what happens is, we know that the enemy is now eating the rump steaks, he's eating the zebra, he's eating all of this, and this is in scene four, by the way. He's eating all the things, and these three clowns, uh, these three, uh, uh, the, the lion and the, two, and, the, and the two friends, are now sitting back, relaxing, burping on worms and on, um, on bugs. And so I want you to say to you, be careful of your associations, because you become like them. And so, scene five. Here comes the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in the movie, I saw is Nala. So Nala shows up. Now Nala was, was um, Simba's friend. And she shows up. And she says, hey Simba, what are you doing here? And now here is what God is saying to you. Hey Simba, what are you doing here? And he says in his mind, if she knew what I had done. But the enemy had deceived him because he never did anything. And so what he's done is he's robbed him of his future. And then she says, hey, why is he holding back? Why won't he be the king that I see in him? And he says, and she says to him, Simba, what are you doing here? We really need you. You're the king. What are you doing here? And he says, no, I'm not the king. He says, scars the king. And so often we've allowed the enemy to run over our lives. But that is going to stop today. Because as you understand who you are, you can take your power, you can take your dominion, and you can take your authority back. And he says, no, 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 he says, no, I'm not. He says, Scar is. And he's let the hyenas take over everything. He's destroyed everything, all the food. There's no water. And so she, so she says to him, there's no water, there's no food. She says, Simba, please, you need to come back. And this is what God is saying to you. If you... Do not become the salt of the earth. Everything will be lost. And so what you need to do is you need to rise up. It's time to rise up and take your place that God has created you for. And so we see now that um, Nala is speaking to him. The Holy Spirit is speaking to him and saying to him, you're the king, Simba. You're the king and you are the kings and queens that need to take your place. And the same thing that God is saying. You're the king. And... Um, I just wanted to let you know that whatever you have done, whatever you have done, just ask God to release you. Whatever you think you've done, that the enemy has deceived you, just ask God to release you and then take your place. And so I just put here, wherever you think you've messed up, wherever you think you've messed up, we serve a God of second chances. We serve a God of second chances. And so everything is dying in the land. The, the land is becoming black. The, the animals are running out. The hyenas represent demon spirits that are working for Scar. And they are killing this land. And I'll tell you why. Because he can't keep anything alive. He's a dead spirit. And because of he, he only has death in him. And he cannot revive it. But the children of God have the, something called the blessing on him. On them, the blessing of the Lord is able to revive, restore, renew, refresh, and that's what Adam had on him. It's able to create, it's able to bring back to life. And in Ezekiel 34, verse 35, it says, I will turn the desolate land into the Garden of Eden. And we know that when Isaac left the land, uh, when Abimelech sent him out of the land, all the trees died. And I've told you before that the blessing, when Isaac walked in the land, all the trees came to life. You see, what you have inside of you is power. 
to reproduce the garden anywhere you go. And so this dead spirit is now killing everything around him. And we can see that happening around us in the world. The society is changing and shifting. The schools, there are problems in the schools. There are problems in the business world. The money markets are going wild. What's happening is this, the, this, the spirit that is driving that thing is, is, is creating a desolate wilderness. And it's time now for the children of God to step back and to stand up and to say, this is my time to shine. And so we want to encourage you this morning. If you don't come back, she says to him, everyone will starve. If you don't come back, everyone will starve. And I want you to see in you is Christ in you, who is the hope of glory. And in him was life. And that life was the light of men. And so we see Simba running back into the field. He runs back into the field to think it's a lot on his mind, much like what's going on with you at the moment that I've put on you and I've said to you, it's your time to rise up. Stop sitting back and waiting for something to happen. Signs and wonders were in Gideon. He was saying, where be all the miracles? They were inside him and they're inside you. The miracles are in you. The signs and wonders are in you. And God needs to partner with you in order to bring forth the signs and the wonders that he's created for this season. So he runs into this field and he meets up with this monkey. And so here is this monkey. This monkey singing in a tree. And he's really bugging Simba. As Simba walks by, he's singing. And Simba turns around and says, look, will you stop bugging me? And so... Simba, anyway, this monkey keeps on singing. Simba says, look, who are you? And the monkey turns around. It's interesting a monkey is being used here because monkeys are known for not knowing too much. But this monkey knew everything. Okay, so the monkey questions me. He says, no, 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 no. He says, the question is, who are you? Don't ask me who I am. Who are you? Because Simba had forgotten who he was. And so Simba then says to him, I thought I knew, but now I'm not so sure. And the monkey says to him, well, I know who you are. Isn't that amazing? I want to tell you that I know who you are. And so Simba, he says, you're, uh, the uh, monkey says, you are Mufasa's boy. Now we know that Mufasa is a representation of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's your brother. He's the king. And Simba was created in his image and likeness. It's his son. And so what happens is Simba then says, you knew my father. And the monkey turns around and he says, correction, I know your father. And Simba then says, perhaps you don't know that he died a long time ago. He died in the gauntlet. And the monkey says, you're wrong again. He's alive. I'll show him to you. Why don't you come down here? And he takes, he takes him down to the waters and he opens up the reeds. And he says, look down here, Simba. Look down here, boy. I'll show him to you. Come. And Simba then comes along. And Simba says, he looks at his reflection in the water, and he says, that's not my father. He says, that's my reflection. And the monkey says, I want you to look harder, Simba. Look harder. Look in the water. There's something in the water. Look, look, look harder. And he says, you see, this is the monkey now. He lives in you. And the next minute, his father appears on the water. And he says, Simba, now he's talking to you now. He says, Simba, and Simba says, Father. And he says, Simba, you have forgotten who you are. And Simba turns around, how could I? And the father says, you have forgotten who you are. And so you have forgotten me. Look inside yourself. And this is what I want you to see. This, these, are the, these are the nuggets in the story. Look inside yourself, Simba. And you put your name there. You are more than what you have become. You are more than what you have become. You are sitting here. You are not supposed to be here. You are supposed to be there. You are supposed to be in dominion, power, and authority, making things happen. People are supposed to be seeing you as the light of the world, Simba. You are supposed to be the king and the queen. You are supposed to be the one ruling, reigning with power and with authority. But you hear sucking worms of these boys. Now it's time to go back, Simba. He says that you are more than what you have become. And you must take your place. Remember who you are. You are my son. That's what God's saying to you. Remember who you are. You are his child, created in the image and likeness of your father. You are an exact duplicate of your father. Now act like it. And this is what he was saying in the story. You are the one 
true king. Remember who you are. My Bible says this. I have made you a little lower than myself and I've crowned you with glory and with honor. That's in Psalm 8 verse 5 to 6. I gave you dominion and power over the works of my hand and put all things under your feet, including time. He has created you limitless. You see, the original Adam was extraordinary. And I want to tell you, you've seen yourself as ordinary. You are not ordinary. You are far from ordinary. I got this little picture here and I'm going to show it to you because you can walk as ordinary and that's cool. I don't know if you can see that. But inside Superman, there was something greater and there is something greater in you. I want to express to you when I say you are extraordinary, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You've been chosen by your father to live a marvelous life. Look at this. The word extraordinary, I looked it up, just hearing those words, extraordinary. You know, ordinary is Clark Kent, but extraordinary is Superman. <laughs> He's a different being. He's a different species of being. So as we go into this series of Limitless, I'm going to show you who you are. And I said to you in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus was talking to Jesus, he said, listen, man, how can I be born again? You see, when you were born again, something happens, something transpires inside your spirit. It's the life of God that is injected into you and you become another man. And so that's what happened to Gideon. It happened to me. It happened to Simba. Simba's father is now speaking to him, telling him what he made him and how he made him. And so we know that if you look at this word extraordinary, it speaks about something that is beyond what is usual. Beyond what is usual. It's not common. Exceptional. Exceeding the common measure. Amazing. Marvelous. Unimaginable. You see, this is Adam before the fall. Now Christ Jesus has come to lift us back to that place where Adam was. So you're it. Now take your place. And so you are extraordinary. You are marvelous. Your life is supposed to be a sign and a wonder to everyone around you. They are to wonder how in the world is this guy doing it. As the wind blows. That's what Jesus and Nicodemus was discussing. He says as the wind blows. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So is everyone that is born again of the Spirit of God. Because he's an extraordinary being. And so when I say to you, speak some things, it's like God himself is speaking through you. That's the way it works. And so the opposite of extraordinary is common, usual, normal. You are not normal. You may look like them. Two eyes, one nose, and a head. But you are not normal inside because you are a spirit being. That lion's car could not keep anything alive. He's a dead spirit. That's what happened to Adam. He was disconnected from his father. And the moment he disconnected from his father, he missed heaven's network. He was no longer operating at that frequency anymore. But you have come back. Because Christ Jesus in you has seated you in heavenly places with him. Ruling and reigning. Now take your place. And so... It's amazing, my boy Ethan is here, but when I, when I wrote this down, Ethan used to yearn to fly. He would love to fly, fly airplanes. Why? Because inside of us, we have something we wanted. There's a, there's a, we possess a beyond human capability power inside of us, and we yearn for that. That's why we watch the movies like Superman, Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk. Ethan, you love Incredible Hulk. Why? Because it's in you to be a ruler. It's in you. And so he says here to his boy, remember who you are. In fact, I put down as a side, and then he runs home. So he goes home, and let me tell you what he does when he goes home. And that's the end of that little story. And then I'm going to tell you how to keep the lion in you alive. So the father speaks to him, you are the one true king. Remember who you are. And he says, remember, remember. The next minute he's up. And he chases back to that pride land. And when he gets there and he sees that scar, he roars. Roar! Now a lion, you can hear him five kilometers away because he's got power. He's got authority. You are the sons and daughters of the lion. <laughs> you belong to the tribe of lions, the tribe of Judah. 
and a lion does not back away for anything. In fact, if anything comes in when a lion's sleeping and it wakes up, that thing becomes lunch. It's finished. It's over. It's dominion. It's power. It's authority. Nothing gets away. And so this is what he does. He goes back, he roars, and I put some things down here, which I'm going to read to you. Uh, and he, um, the devil has had your family long enough. It's time for you to roar. It's time for you to use that mouth. I told you, you are made a speaking spirit like your father. In Genesis 2 verse 7 it says, And God formed man out of the dust of the ground, that's one part, and then he breathed into himself, into man, the breath of life. He breathed himself into man. He is the one that is going to do the work. You do the speaking, he'll do the work. And so, and man became a speaking spirit just like his father. And I said to you in Ephesians 5 verse 1, you are made to operate like your heavenly father. So imitate him. Do what he does. When God said, he saw. When God said this, he saw. And whenever God speaks, everything around you hears. Why? Because he's a lion. He's a picture of dominion. He's a picture of power. He's a picture of authority. And the Bible says where the word of a king is, that's you, there is power. What is that? That's your roar. And so it's time to roar at your health problems. You've got an issue. Tell that devil to get off. It's illegal. He's not even allowed to be there. Why is he there? You've allowed him there. Sucking worms and eating bugs. Tell him to get off. Devil, now in the name of Jesus, get off their health. Now, in Jesus' name, bring them back to, restore them to health in Jesus' name. Tell them to get off your business. Tell them to get off your opportunities because they are your opportunities. They're not even his. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. He's not even, he's a squatter. He's in your land. Tell him to get out in Jesus' name. And so, once Gideon found out who he was and God had spoken to him and said to him, Listen, you are the mighty man of valor. That little hiding boy went out and defeated that army. And it's about time you do the same. You've got to get to a place where you say enough is enough, man. We've got to get this thing together. And so I want to encourage you this morning. Let's rise up. Let's go back to the place where he's called us to be. And let's tell the devil to get off our land. Right. It's time to challenge us. Put down there. That's fine. It's time to challenge that devil that, stood in your, that has stood in your way. He's been there long enough. All right. Now. When he pulled back the, the reeds and he showed him his picture, that speaks about the Word of God. And inside the Word of God are the pictures of you. And so Jesus found out where it was written of him, and he walked out of the pages of Scripture. And so this, the, the Bible is called the mirror of God. And it says this in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 8, For us, uh, all of us, with an unveiled face, because we continued in the Word of God as a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are constantly being transfigured and transformed to his very own image and increasing in splendor from one degree of glory to another. What's happening is as you read the word, you're finding out, hey, this is spiritual water. It's producing in you. It's producing in you as you read it, as you find the pictures of who you are. And I'm going to show you one or two pictures uh, in that. I also want to remind you, listen. Let's just do this very quickly. Remember I showed you this last week. You are made like your father. Whatever is in the source is in the resource. There is no difference. And so when they see you, they should see your father. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. In other words, he said in John chapter 10, I and my father are one. We are one. We are together. And so whatever can't stop God, can't stop you. Because He is in you. He is for you. And they cannot stop you. All right. All right. So, two scriptures. Just so that you've got the lion in you. Revelations 5 verse 5 says this. Weep not, behold, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. He's prevailed. He's already prevailed. And then in Hebrews 2 verse 11, it says, um, He is not ashamed to call you brethren. In other words, Jesus and you are brothers. That's how you belong to the lion, uh, to the tribe of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay, but what does it take to manifest this lion nature? Very quickly, the lion is, is a, a, a symbol of strength 
it's um, it's a, it's a if you look at a lion's mane and you look at the his coat, uh, I'm talking about a well-fed lion now. You can see it's glistening. It glistens off its coat. The coat is beautiful. It looks wonderful. And that is a and really what that shows is what that lion is feeding on. Now, if you go up the road here, I'm not going to mention the place, but there's five lions that are lying there. Those lions are scraggly. Those lions are, are, are looking very sad. And the problem with those lions is they are not hunting on, number one, fresh meat. They get thrown their meat like that. And number two is they are not being well fed. So the quality of the food that you feed on, I'm talking about the Word of God now, the quality of the food that you feed on will show in the demonstration of power and authority. So this is what I'm talking about. When I talk about your identity, you need to know who you are. The quality of the food that you're feeding on. There are three, four levels. Um, there are four levels of, of meat or, or, or um, nutrition in the Word of God. There's the water level, the milk level, the meat level, and then there's a strong meat level, Hebrews 5. It says that, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. A lion cannot feed on bunnies. It cannot feed on, 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 on rabbits. It feeds on buffalo, zebra, wildebeest. It charges after them, jumps on them, it pulls them down and eats them fresh. It doesn't feed on yesterday's meal. And so this is a mystery, but this is how you keep your spirit of dominion and power alive. So, number one, it feeds on strong meat. Strong meat. Make sure you're hearing the right word. The right word. You cannot defeat the devil on cupcakes and Twinkies. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Make sure. Be careful what you are listening to. Please. And number two. The, uh, the, the lion feeds on strong meat. He feeds on fresh meat. Fresh kills. A lion will never eat yesterday's meal. Please. Fresh, fresh, the, the, more, the more alive the lion becomes and the more dominion, the more alive he becomes, the more dominion and power and authority he has. And then a lion feeds on meat and season, meat and season, fresh meat and then meat and season. Fresh meat is, I will give you your daily bread, the word, the word. And then meat and season is a fresh word. But a word that is applicable for today. A lion hunts daily. It's got to hunt for its food or it will die. And so what happens is in a meat in season, you've got to hunt for that word. I told you, you've got to go and hunt for it. You've got to find it. And so you've got to look for a word in season. You can't be listening to, uh, I don't know, uh, messages on... on um, a, Hunt for the correct word. If you're looking for finances, please look for the, the word in season on finances. Don't be looking over here. Don't be looking over here at some other thing. Look for the word, the correct word, the right word, and the word in season. And so Jesus said this in John chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. This is talking about fresh meat now. Fresh meat and a word in season. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I can do nothing of myself, but my Father hath taught me, and I speak these things. My Father hath taught me. In John 5 verse 30, we're talking about fresh meat and a word in season. As I hear, this was Jesus, as I hear, I judge. In other words, God is baking bread every single day. You need to be at the bakery in the morning. Because as that word comes out, it's fresh. You bake the bread. And you see the steam. That is a fresh word. That is a word in season. And so a lion has to have fresh meat every single day. Um, I'm going to give you one or two scriptures that I want you to stand on. Um, and you can call for these and we'll give you these scriptures. Um, but the more of the word of God that you imbibe, that you put inside your heart and you let it grow, the more you're going to see God. And I'm going to tell you why. This is found in Peter. It says this, Whereby it is given to you exceeding great, not just great, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises 
you might be partakers of the divine nature. That's God, divine nature. That you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world through lust. In other words, what happens is when you imbibe the word of God, you are imbibing God. So when you're feeding on the right stuff, because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. The Word was God. So when you are feeding on the Word of God, you are feeding on God Himself. Now, who do you think is coming into you? It's God. He's in you. Because He and His Word are one. If you hear my voice, I'm one with my Word. So His Word and Him are one. When you take that into you and it becomes a part of you, you and Him become uh, join together. I and my Father are one. So the more of the word you imbibe, the more of the divine nature you are, you are going to show forth. And it says here that having escaped, having escaped the corruption of the world. How do you escape the corruption of the world? By understanding who you are. And so Gideon went from a caterpillar to a butterfly. How did you do that? By the process of renewing your mind. The Bible says this, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, the restoration, the opening of your mind, the rechanging, renewing of your mind. It means a complete renovation. When you do a house renovation and you say, I don't want that chair over there, dump that table, I don't want it. And you get a new table in, a new set of chairs. That's what the Bible is saying to you to do. And you, the, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a word called metamorphu. In other words, there's a transformation. That word transformed, it's a word metamorphosis. It means go from a caterpillar which is on the ground to a butterfly which flies. And so that's what happened to Gideon, happened to me. And it's happening to this young lion because he's about to take over, take back all his stuff. And so how did he do it? He did it by imbibing the revelations, the truth, the pictures, and infusing into himself the word, the word of God. In closing, it says this in Mark chapter 10, verse 27. With men it is impossible, but not with God. With men it is impossible, but not with God. Now, when you have Christ in you, you become extraordinary. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things become possible. And that means when you believe it is possible, you have escaped the human realm and you are now into a divine realm where God can start becoming God. And so what happens is, as you believe God at new levels, you will see that your faith will come alive and you escape the realm of human limitation. And you can see things that others can't see. And you can go places that others can't go. All right. These, I'm just going to just touch very quickly. Um, I think we are out of time, but I just want to give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one or two. Just one or two. The Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16, the word says that you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be salted? And therefore, it will become good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. But you... He's talking about you now, or the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp. He hasn't lit you for a corner, I've told you, and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand that it can give light to the entire house. Let your light so shine before men, not just shine, so shine, exceedingly shine, so beautifully shine before men that they may see your good works and then turn around and glorify your Father in heaven. Miracles, signs and wonders are the dinner bell for the unsaved. Because when they see what God's doing in your life, they want to know how in the world, this, this guy was over there just now, now he's over there. Now how did that happen? And so then you can come in and say, that's my Father. Isn't he wonderful? And you explain to them how you can get to the top. You were born to shine. You were not born uh, for shame. You were born to be a blessing and not a burden. And you were born to be a distributor, not a collector. You were born to succeed you were created to add value to human life and you are the light of the world you are the pace setters the pathfinders and the trailblazers that this world is waiting for you show the world the way to go and the way forward light is always ahead of darkness you were not created ordinary you were actually born as a role model to this world and i will need you and your father needs you to take your place new birth makes you completely unique Everyone should be looking up to you as to the way to go. And uh, the way that you do this is to get this understanding of your identity. 
And so I hope I've helped you this morning. The last one I will show you is in Revelations 22 verse 16. It says this, Jesus said, I have sent my angels to declare these things unto you. I am Alpha, the Alpha and Omega. Now to me, it's amazing. The Alpha, the Alpha, the Alpha. The Alpha male is a lion. I am Al the Alpha and the Omega. I am the bright and the morning star. I'm the one that lifts the light in the morning. I'm the bright and the morning star. He then says over in John 20 verse 22, and this is where you come in. He says, as my father has sent Jesus, even so am I sending you. You were sent as the bright and the morning star. You were sent to show the world what to follow. And that's what I want to end, you with, end with today. So, Father, we give you the praise. We thank you, Lord, for who you've created us to be. You've created us extraordinary in every single way. That we are to show forth your wonders wherever we go. In fact, you, are said to, you said, Lord, in your word that we are to be wondered at. And it's because of you and us, Father. So help us to gain an understanding and revelation of who we are. Let us tell that devil to get off our path. He's been there long enough. In fact, that is our promised land. That is our pride land. And we're taking it all back. Devil, we announce now in Jesus' name that we are coming after our stuff. You will get off our stuff in the mighty name of Jesus. And this word will be confirmed with signs and wonders and miracles, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are listening. There are miracles going to pop forth from their life. Things that they have never seen before. Just on this word, Father, I thank you, Lord, that they're about to blossom and to bloom and to bring forth things that people around them are going to say, this boy, these people that are on this program have been sitting with God and hearing his word. I thank you that that word will be confirmed with great and wonderful manifestations in their life and they will become signs and wonders to all of those around them in their businesses, in their schools, their children will go to the top, uh, in their careers. They are, they are made and, and brought forth to be successful. So we thank you for that, Lord. We give you praise for an excellent and wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen.